Hey guys, I'm one hour into my first solo road trip in California. I'm going from Northern California to Southern California and then into Nevada. And I'm actually more anxious about this trip than I, and that I, ha than I have been compared to uh, traveling around the world to a foreign country for a couple of reasons, right? Number one, oh wow, there's some horses over there. I did not see them on the way down. I'm, right now I'm in St. Louis Reservoir Oh, they're, no, they're not horses. They're really, I'm actually a little frightened. I just mentioned I was anxious. I don't, I don't know if it's safe to walk up to a pack of, uh, they're not horses. They're not, they're way too big to be deer. If I turn it around, you won't be able to see it. But again, this is not something that you would uh, see if you were traveling in Indonesia or the Philippines. And one of the reasons is that you just, you just have so much wide open space in the, in the US. Um, quite frankly, the country is underpopulated. A large city, right? They're moving that way. Thank goodness. Uh oh, one of them's looking at me. One of them's looking at me. I don't know what's going to happen here. I, oh, they, they look pretty docile. They're just trying to figure out if I'm a, th a threat to, the, to them. But there's about five of them, and they're looking right at me. And I don't know if. Okay. So I looked away. So I don't know if we were, I don't know if we were having a, a staring, and now they kept moving. I don't know if, the, if, if they were, we were doing a staring down contest just now. I don't see a baby, so, and they're still looking at me. Okay, I don't know what's gonna happen here. I am genuinely a little bit anxious. I'm not used to animals. The view is beautiful, by the way. I wish I, wish I could show it to you. Uh, a little, little bit of a rock formation over here. These poor animals are trying to figure out if I'm a threat at the same time that I'm trying to figure out if they're a threat. Let me see if I can, I'll wave to him. Hello. Okay, that one of them accepted my offer of peace. This is kind of interesting. Sometimes, sometimes people will just, you know, build a little bit of a rock formation. Um, you know, there's not, not a whole lot else to do over here, right? If you're camping. So, you know, the United States, you know, a big city within the US would be a million people. That would put you in the top 15. In China, a city of 5 million people would put you not even in the, it would be a small city compar you know, com but for comparison purposes. Let me see if I can just kind of move away from these guys to convince them that, can you see them behind me? Okay. I don't know if you can. Is that? So, you know, one of the interesting things about the United States is that if you watch a movie from Hollywood, you're always in a big city for the most part. And so, you know, the fact of the matter, though, is that the United States is, is just vast. And that's one of the reasons we've had the opportunity for, you know, so much art, because of this idea that vast spaces allow new beginnings, allow a rebirth, allow second chances. And you know, obviously you have better run countries, like Singapore is a better run country, but it's tiny. So, it, it, you know, there it, it isn't quite that same ethos of rebirth, of just the opportunity to get in your car and drive for four hours. Especially not to drive, drive down, try to walk to a reservoir and then see about five wild animals and a fly on your thumb over here, trying to figure out what, what, what you're up to and why you're in their space. Um, so, but the reason I'm, you know, sort of, a little bit more anxious about this is because not just of stuff like this but god if they charge i'm screwed aren't i uh I could probably get here in about three seconds <laughs> but i'm moving away from them so i'm being loud i think that's what you're supposed to do right you're supposed to be loud and wave your arms and try to look bigger than what you actually are i don't know if any of that actually helps would like to talk to a, a cattle rancher about these sorts of things. But getting back to the point of why am I really anxious about this whole trip? Am I even going the right way? Oh man, that would be embarrassing. Yeah. Okay. Just walking back to my car. And you know, since I picked up some sweat, that's why a lot of the animals are probably, a lot of the insects are taking notice of me. Another reason you want to wear long sleeves and long pants. So... Um, 
And I'll show you another reason why you want to wear long pants when I'm safely in my car. <sighs> so you can tell I didn't grow up around a lot of animals other than goldfish. And that was really only once a year. So the tendency is to overpack when you're traveling in your own country. Uh, I now have packed enough with the same amount for a one week trip in the US as I would for a six month trip overseas. And, you know, I've got multiple pairs of shoes. I've got, you know, I just found a pair of shoes that I didn't know I had in the truck of my car. And of course you want to bring some snacks, you know, a cooler of some sort, um, you know, a gallon of water, all sorts of things you couldn't really do if you're just traveling with a backpack and a carry-on or a laptop bag and a carry-on. So uh, that's the first issue. The second issue is, is you tend to over-prepare. And right now I've got obviously my phone, which functions as a GPS. I've got a, uh, an actual GPS, but it's about 10 years old. And I've got a printed out directions in hard copy. And they all kind of conflict with each other. So that's another problem with over-preparing. Too many options. The second thing is that I'm traveling now during a, the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm not necessarily... I really hope I'm going the right way. Let's finish this up and then see if I'm going the right way. That would be so embarrassing. I think I went the wrong way. I'm some... No. I hope you're enjoying my uh, idiocy. You know... Even though I travel, it doesn't mean I'm good at it. So the second reason, I just said, I just walk. And what I should do is, here's a tip that I don't follow myself. When you park, just uh, you know, put a little label on Google Maps that tells you where you are, and then you can walk back without these sorts of issues. Um, the second reason is that, you know, because of this pandemic, I'm not quite sure if all of the information online is accurate. A lot of places that would be a lot of fun to see are closed. There's a restaurant with Buck Owens, for example, that I would have loved to see, uh, but it's closed uh, because of the pandemic. And so overall, the great thing about walking, typically, is that you just have to put one foot in front of the other. And if you're a normal person, which means reasonably probably smarter than I am uh, that's much easier to do than to sort of just travel with a car and so on and so forth I think I see a path but who knows where the path whether the path will lead me back to my car so that's one of the problems that I have when I travel is I'm so excited to see new places I just forget where I am and it's just a gorgeous view I don't know about this up. It's just amazing. Vast open spaces. And this is in part due to Theodore Roosevelt and Justice William Douglas, who fought to preserve a lot of these spaces from overdevelopment. And that, despite being a Supreme Court justice, you know, William Douglas's legacy may in fact be, uh oh. Uh, may in fact be this, the preservation of wide open spaces. I am appear to be at a dead end if I'm going this way. So I will go ahead and, and end this and see if I can make it back to my car. Take care.